so hello everyone greetings for the day and today we will be talking about ECG that is the electrocardiogram and the electrocardiograph so st starting from the uh, meaning of this electrocardiograph electrocardiograph is mainly the graph which which we obtained from the signals which are generated in the heart and the electrocardiogram is the device from which we measure these bioelectric events so starting from the first point the recording of electrical activity recording of electrical activity let me take a marker recording of electrical activity associated with the functioning of heart is electrocardiogram ECG is a quasi periodical rhythmically repeating signal remember rhythmically repeating signal synchronized by the function of heart which acts as a generator of bioelectric events bioelectric events are the events these events are generated inside a living organism the electrical pulses or the electrical impulses which are generated from different organs suppose um, the heart is beating and it is generating some kind of uh, energy in the form of electrical signals which uh, we are going to record here this generated signal can be described by means of simple electric dipole as we know electric dipole is the positive and the negative pole consisting of a positive and a negative pair of charge the waveforms thus recorded have been standardized in terms of amplitude and phase relationships and any deviation from this would reflect a presence of abnormality so what we have done is firstly we have set some amplitude set a default amplitude and phase relations which describes some describes various functions of heart so here it is saying that we have set some amplitude and phase relations and any deviations from this default electrocardiograph will reflect as the presence of an abnormality in the functioning of heart okay so coming to the next point the heart has its own system for generating and conducting action potentials it has its own system for generating and conducting action potentials through a complex change of ionic concentrations here it is written complex change of ionic concentrations oh sorry complex change of ionic concentrations across the cell membrane so what which part of the heart is generating these action potentials this potential this energy electrical energy so let me take another color okay so the generating system is located in the top right atrium near the entry of the vena cava so the location here we are talking about is this one okay this location we are talking about they are a group of cells known as the sinoatrial node as also known as sa node it is very important it might come in one marker exam one markers so sino atrial node okay it is also known as the sa node it initiate the initiates the heart activity and it act as a primary pacemaker from the of the heart so the SA node, the sinoatrial node, is about 25 to 30 millimeter in length and 2 to 5 millimeter thick. So these cells present in the right atrium of the heart 
is responsible for generating the main electrical pulses which are going to help in the beating of the heart. Coming on to the next point, it generates impulses at normal rate of about 72 beats per minute. This is our standard um, heart rate. Because the body acts as a purely resistive medium, the potential field generated by the SA node extends to the other parts of the heart. So here it is saying that because the body acts as a purely resistive medium, purely resistive medium, as we have uh, read that, uh, what are resistances? From which uh, electrical impulse or electrical field, electric field can travel. So the potential generated by the SA node, suppose here is the heart and it is a 4 channel heart so here we are generating the here the SA node is generating the impulses and it is traveling to all parts of the heart okay as it is written in the next point the wave propagates through the left and the right right and the left atria at a velocity of 1 meter per second the wave propagates the wave propagates through the right and the left atria at a velocity of 1 meter per second about 0.1 seconds are required for the excitation of the atria to be completed so here it is saying from traveling from here to the this part of the heart or we can say the boundaries it takes about 0.5 seconds 0.1 seconds so the action potential contracts the atrial muscle and the impulses spread the node the node is located at the lower part of the wall between the two atria the action potential contracts the atrial muscle the action potential contracts the atrial muscles and impulse spread through the atrial wall about 0.04 seconds to the AV node to the AV node so what is AV node? So let's understand. Here the heart signal is generated. So then it is traveled from uh, through the tissues and to the AV node. From here it is distributed to all look all the locations of the heart. The AV node delayed delays the de spread of excitation of about 0.12 seconds so this delay is very important the delay caused by the AV node is very important as when the heart is actually beating so this part contract first then this part expands then it contracts the blood flows there and then it works like this Due to the presence of a fibrous barrier of non-excitable cells that effectively prevent the propagation of continuing beyond the limits of the atria. So the delay, it, it is caused by the fibrous barrier of non-excitable cells present in the heart. Then a special conduction system known as the bundle of His carries the action potential to the ventricles. So we know that here are, oh, this is the ventricular portion of the heart. So now we have received all the impulses generated by the SA node to the AV node. So the AV node now will transfer all these impulses to the ventricular region of the heart. So here we are repeating the line again. A special conduction system known as the bundle of Hess carries the action potential to the ventricles. Carries the action potential to the ventricles. The atria and ventricles are thus functionally linked only by the AV node and the conduction system. So this is the ventricular region and here is the atrial region. The AV node displays delays. The AV node delay ensures the atria complete their conduct contraction the atria complete their contraction before there is any ventricular contraction so previously this is the line which i uh, which i was trying to explain you 
the impulse leaves the AV node via the bundle of phase. The fibers in the bundle of phase are known as Purkinje fibers. That is very important. Fibers in this bundle are known as Purkinje fibers. After short distance, they split into two branches to initiate the action potential simultaneously in the true ventricles. So, they split into two branches to generate or to initiate the action potential simultaneously into the two ventricles. Conduction velocity in the Purkinje fibers is about 1.5 to 2.5 meter per second. Since the direction of impulse propagating in the bundle of phase is from the apex of the heart, the ventricular contraction begins at the apex and proceeds upwards to the ventricular walls. This results in the contraction of ventricles, producing a squeezing action which forces the blood out of the ventricles to the atrial system. So this line is very important. What is the purpose of contraction here? Contraction of ventricles produces a squeezing action which forces the blood out of the ventricles so that uh, the blood could reach the atrial system again and then it is sent to the lungs and the lungs oxygenate the blood and send it to heart again and from the aorta it is then distributed to the whole parts of all parts of the body. Now we will study about the heart cycle or the waveform or we can say the the actual ECG of the heart which is generated by the heart so we have all seen uh, this kind of graph and graph obtained in the ECG result so we will I will be explaining you this uh, graph again with a technical point of view so firstly what we have to remember is okay firstly we have to remember is p q r s t u these are the types of waves generated by the heart in one cycle okay you can clearly see that it is the start the electrical activity starts from the p wave then q wave then r wave then s wave then t then u and then again it is repeated p q r s t so the normal wave pattern of the electrocardiogram is shown okay the pr and pq interval measured from the beginning of the p wave pr pr let me locate it for you pr the pr wave and the pq and the pq wave measured from the beginning of the P wave to the onset of R and R or Q wave respectively marks the time in which an impulse leaving the SA node takes the takes to reach the ventricles. So this is the time where the electrical impulse so electrical impulse leaves the SA node and reach to the ventricles electrical impulses okay the PR interval normally lies between 0 0.1 to 2, 0 0.2 seconds the QRS interval which represent the time taken by the heart impulse to travel first through the interventricular system and then to the free walls of the ventriculars ventricles normally lies from the 0 0.5 this point is totally we have to cram Then the T wave represents the repolarization of the both ventricles. Repolarization is the expansion of the squeezed ventricle again so that it could contain more blood and then pump out to the atrial system again.
okay the t wave represents the repolarization so this wave is representing the repolarization of the heart repolarization of the ventricles the qt interval therefore is the period for one complete ventricular contraction which is known as systole ventricular diastole starting from the end of the t wave starting from the end of the t wave and extends to the beginning of the next q wave so all this is like this it is the diastole like part starting from the end of the t wave okay this we have discussed typical amplitude of qrs is 1 millivolt typical amplitude with this we have to remember the amplitude of the qrs wave is the one is 1 millivolt for a normal human heart which when recorded in one lead, lead one position okay so coming on to the electrocardiograph so firstly we have to discuss uh, what is basically a uh, electrocardiograph is so it is an instrument which records the electrical activity of heart and it has a great clinical significance ecg provides a valuable information about a wide range of cardiac disorders such as the presence of an inactive part or infarction or an enlargement of the heart muscle so basically basically it tells about uh, the functioning of basically the valuable information which is um, needed for a uh, needed to cure a heart problem okay electrocardiographs are used in the catheter catheterization of uh, laboratories electrocardiographs are used in catheterization laboratories coronary care units and for routine diagnostic applications in cardiology the diagnostically used of frequency range is usually accepted as 0.5 to 150 hertz the amplifier and the writing part should faithfully reproduce signals in this range so uh, we'll discuss uh, in the later part of this high frequency response is compromise of several factors like isolation between a useful ecg signal or the other signals from the biological origin and limitations of the direct writing pen recorders due to the mass inertia or the friction so it is uh, basically saying that um, the response with uh, the high frequency uh, high frequency response uh, uh, which is uh, actually what is happening here is when we record the ecg when we record the ecg so here other types of biological signals interfere interfere with the electrical signals so well, there is a limitation in this you can say the recording part so coming on to the block diagram description of an electrocardiograph so firstly uh, we all have seen the electrodes ecg electrodes placed uh, on the patient's body uh, so firstly we'll place the ecg electrodes and then the ecg electrodes uh, come to the lead selector lead selector will uh, study in the next then it goes to the pre amplifier we all study in this uh, theory part then it goes to the power amplifier then bridge output circuit so the bridge output circuit is then send the signal one to the feedback network and the other to the pen motor and from the pre amplifier signals uh, it is then Uh, the pre amplifier uh, receives the signals from the auxiliary circuits and the auxiliary circuits uh, also sends a signal to the charge transport motor so mainly what is happening here is the potentials picked up by the patient electrodes are taken to the lead selector in the lead selector the electrodes are selected into 2 by 2 according to the lead program so in the lead selector we have a lead program which uh, selects the different types of leads one by one so by means of capacitive coupling the signal is connected symmetrically to the long tail pair of differential preamplifier the preamplifier is usually a three or four stage differential amplifier 
having a sufficiently large negative current feedback from the end stage to the first stage which gives the stabilizing effect so uh, what we uh, what we have to remember in this is it gives a stabilizing effect okay the amplified output signal is picked up by the single ended and is given to the power amplifier the power amplifier is generally of the push pull differential type the base of the one input transistor of the amplifier is driven by the pre amplified unsymmetrical signal the base and the other tra other resistor under transistor is driven by the feedback signals resulting from pen position and connected by a frequency selective network the output of the power amplifier is single ended and then it is fed to a pen motor which deflects the writing arm onto the paper a direct writing recorder is usually adequate since the ecg signal of interest has been has limited bandwidth frequency selective network has an rc network rc resistive and capacitive resistance and capacitance which provides a necess necessary damping of the pen motor and is prevent preset uh, by the manufacturer the auxiliary circuits provide a 1 millivolt 1 millivolt calibration signal and automatic blocking of the amplifier during a change in the position of lead switch it may include a speed control circuit for a chart drive motor so what is standby mode standby mode is the stylus moves in response to the input signals but the paper is stationary this mode allows the operator to adjust and gain the baseline positions controls without the wasting of paper so this is important okay then see you in the next video and if you like it if you get um, some suggestions for me then do write it in the comment box below thank you so much for watching